Previously on Tales of Berseria, we defeated two more Class 4 zones, even if Rokuro had to take one for the team. We also discovered the ominous Terror Island, which turns out to be the home of the Normans. During the Omega Elixir quest, we ran into an exorcist who found the second to last ingredient, which he gave to us after failing to acquire a Moloch's prayers. Ironically, this allowed us to complete the medicine and cure his son, Videl, resulting in a surprisingly happy ending for a quest in this setting. At last! The Nordal set is complete! Hooray! Go us! Turtles! Turtles! Just in time for the win at circles! Your detective skills truly put mine to shame! It wouldn't have taken so much time and effort if you'd been willing to help us look. But you'll make it up to us with a suitable discount next time we trade. <laughs> Can't you give me a break? Never mind. Do you have anything for us? I do mind that. But yeah, here's another letter for Aizen. Another one? I will keep this missive short as my patience with you has expired. Come to the prison island and face your judgment. I will not blame you if you run, but I will consider you a heartless coward of a brother. Oh, this sounds like a challenge to a fight. Now we're talking my language. Let's get going. Whoever this is, they're just trying to get under your skin. Why not let it go and move on? This is the third letter, not counting any that might not have reached us. I say we should go nip this in the bud. Yeah. I think so, too. If we just keep ignoring it, something might happen to Aizen's sister. Exactly. I can't allow that. I want to head to Titania and settle things. I'd rather not do that. Yeah, I want to challenge things in the, uh, in the optimal order if possible. We've got the materials and the meds. Let's improve our defenses and build a stock of weapons. Yeah, that's Sunbury's Pioneer Spirit. The chickens lay a lot of eggs today. Fresh eggs are so nice and warm. Holding them makes me feel good. Well, the chickens are doing their part, so we humans have to do ours too. Do you have any news from the capital? We've heard nothing, which is very distressing. Well, the... Uh, no, actually, I don't want to hear it. I can't handle more bad news at a time like this. We've lost contact with both the army and the abbey. Something huge must be going down. Luckily, Sunbury can provide for herself. We'll show up the defenses and manage somehow. Right, we're in the Sagara. I'm glad you're with us. Benwick told me that you can mop the floor with the water you've used for washing rice, and it'll make the wood shiny. Is that true? It is. Not only does it get the floor clean, it'll put on a layer of rice brown oil at the same time. Two birds with one stone. Wow, that's awesome! I didn't know that. Yeah. Rice water has a lot of uses. The first time you use a new earthenware pot, boil rice water in it, and you'll extend its lifespan. And if you use it when you're rehydrating dried fish, it'll tenderize it and take away the fishy smell too. And if you water plants with it, it acts as a fertilizer. It's really useful stuff. Wow, look at you, Velvet. Maybe I could see you with a family after all. You don't have to act so surprised. Still, I've never read that in any of my books before. How did you end up learning all that? I learned from Salika, who learned it from our mom. It's just been passed down across the family. Wow! What else did you learn from your sister growing up? Salika taught me everything our mom knew about cooking, from the basics to more advanced techniques. Speaking of which, rice water is really useful when cooking, too. If you use it to boil radishes, it'll get rid of their bitter taste. When you use it to boil bamboo shoots or burdock roots, they'll soften and take on a nice white color. My mother taught Salika that anyone who threw away rice water wasn't qualified for housework, and my sister passed it on to me, too. You know so many cool things! When I needed to make my bra... When you need to make a child eat their vegetables, it'll go over better if you can cook them tender and not so bitter. I bet you'd make a pretty good mom one day, Velvet. You really think so? Actually, since you're here, Bienfu, I have to ask. Those are discarded vegetables on your tray there, aren't they? Yeah, but they're just raw scraps left over from cooking. I was on my way to throw them out just now. What are you talking about? That's all still good stuff you can use. Look at those radish leaves. 
Dice them up, fry them in oil, add soy sauce, cooking wine, bonito flakes, and sesame seeds, and voila! A perfectly healthy topping for rice. And that potato skin? If you wipe the inner side on a mirror, it won't fog up. Put some salt on those lemon rinds and you can use them to scribble wash bays and sparkling clean. Holy cow, Velvet! You're a treasure trove of knowledge! You know what's been bothering me? These pirates are way too wasteful with their food. They leave so much garbage. Uh, you might be getting a little carried away here. Yeah, I think you've made the jump from potential mom to bothersome in-law. Demon Blight for- or no Demon Blight, I have to take care of the crops. We need to eat after all. How many events? Guys still have a long way to go before I perfect my new drink, but I did discover something useful already. If you steep the radish bells in barley wine, the poison is denatured, leaving behind a hearty flavor. Sounds like snake wine. Exactly. That's where I got the idea. So, can I get a taste of your new concoction? Don't tell me I have to wait 50 years for this one, too. I just started brewing it up. It should be ready after the summer. But my intuition is telling me to let it sit for four years. In that case, we'll come back next autumn. Make sure to save enough for two. Nah, two won't be enough. I want to treat the whole crew. How much can you make by then? I've already prepped three large barrels. If I push, I could probably ready another seven. Great. Make them. I'll pay for all seven. And we'll split five barrels in the autumn. What? And we'll come for the other two in four years' time. Right, Eisen? No. We'll only take one more. The last one is yours to sell as the town's specialty. Oh, thank you. I'll make sure it's delicious. Looking forward to it. Next fall, we'll have a feast of the finest spirits. And now I have something to live for. We're five years down the line or fifty, this village will still be here, so don't you worry. Sunbury won't fall to Demon Blight. Hello. We were hoping we could put on a comedy act here. Sure, but who's your partner? Me. I'm going to be honest. I think you'll be the worst of any of them. You just underestimate me. I have my own sense of humor. Just act like we're both aboard the Von Eltia. I already have a bad feeling about this. All right. You can play the strong, forceful type, and I'll be the dumb, slow one who... No. I want to play the dumb character. Are you sure you can handle that? I'll have everyone dying from laughter the way only a Reaper can. I don't think I like where this is going. Hi there! We're your friendly comedy duo, Death by Laughter! Magic Kazam! <laughs> Thank you all for coming here to see us today. Now, when you think of Rakugo, you of course think of classic characters like Hatsuan, Kumasan, Oyasan, and there's the neighborhood retiree, and Yotaro the fool who... Whoa, 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 hold it! What are you rambling on about? Does it matter? I'm just trying to get a feel for the audience. Every comedian does it. Not anymore! Speed is key nowadays! Speed! You need to be snappy and get straight to the point! Well, I object. Comedy that forgets the old classics has no future. What's old is tired. Comedy is always evolving. It has to! <sighs> you must be some new wave type then. Did you just click your tongue at me? No. <sighs> you totally did! I heard that! I'm the leader here, and don't you forget it! If you respect comedy, then respect my authority! Sorry. Alright, as long as you understand. Now, what are you thinking of doing today? I was thinking of maybe... imitating a clock. T -t 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 -t. Cut that out! I can't take this anymore, you're impossible! <laughs> Whew! It's been a while since I worked so hard. We really tried to practice so the jokes would land. How do you think it went? <sighs> your jokes were... okay, I suppose. But your partner was so intimidating. <sighs> I couldn't laugh. 
Huh? Oh, can't say I'm surprised. I took another hard look at your material and your partner is still scary. Every time this time of year comes around, I can't help but think back on that terrible accident. Can you tell us about it? This was all quite a long time ago, but a carriage transporting suspects to a heresy trial fell down a ravine. I was the one who first found them, and let me tell you, it was a nasty sight. Oh right, I remember hearing about this. Well, these were people who'd made a killing running dodgy shows, so their luck might have just caught up with them. Did anybody survive? Apparently not, but I heard there was one body they never found. Right. She was a girl they'd made a part of their show. I heard they really abused her and forced her to work for them. I hope she managed to escape, but I don't know. There were rumors that a strange spirit saved her life, as if anyone could believe a story like that. Yeah, I heard that too. But the crash happened in the deep mountainside wilderness. It's much more likely that she was eaten by a beast. I'm surprised you know so much about it. It happened when I was still young. Exactly how old are you, Mogilu? As old as my tongue and a little older than my teeth. <laughs> From your reaction, I can at least tell you're not my age. I'm running for mayor when the village gets big enough. There will be a big plaza in the middle of the village and I'll name it after me. Just imagine, less than square. She had the idea to build a great bell tower and make it the symbol of our town. We'll make the tower out of stone, tall and proud. Then we'll hang the biggest bell in the land here. The wind whistling down from the mountains will carry the sound far, far away. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah, it sounds great. Where are you going to quarry the stone? The stone we get from the mountains near here is dense and smooth. Perfect for constructing buildings with. You know your rocks. When I was deciding on where and what to farm here, I spent a lot of time researching the nearby geology. Not only does she have the knowledge, she has a great logical mind. She's been a terrific help in getting this plane off the ground. And he's got the good ideas, but he tends to leap before he looks. Since I don't get flashes of insight like he does, he's given me all sorts of ideas for improving my farm. Now we're trying to find the perfect metal for the bell. The metals and their ratios used when casting the bell will change its sound dramatically, right? That's right. We're testing all sorts of alloys, trying to find one that produces a smooth, pleasing sound. I hope you can find a sound that will soothe the hearts of those both near and far. Once the bell is ready, let's get married. We'll have our very own fairy tale wedding. What, for real? We're not being filmed, are we? If you really mean it, then. We mean filmed. They have. Uh, film back then? Yes, a thousand times, yes. There are no more penguins in the harbor. That's because wild penguins return to their home rivers this time of year. How uh, penguins migrate? Ever since that dragon or pillars of light or whatever it was appeared, the seas have been getting warmer. It's like they're going back to normal. Some of the elders say that Eminok's blessing has returned. Do you think it's a sign that an undersea volcano may erupt soon? Will everyone really turn into a demon? I don't want to turn into a demon. I need to know the difference between love and a crush first. Yeah, tell me about it, kid. Oh, uh, you don't know yet? The color of the sea seems a little different ever since that light came. It's like it was uh, it was when, uh, when I was a boy. Hmm, you think? Be frank, the exorcists are on the back foot. But that only means the support of the masses is more important to them than ever. Please continue to encourage them. Uh, oh, of course. We'll all need to work together to overcome the era of disaster. I don't know how soldiers manage to drink with those visors, visors on. I don't want to give up. I don't want to give up. Good, I don't give up. And don't stop uh, not giving up either. The Abbey is telling everyone to stay away from the Palamedes ruins because a vicious demon has settled in them. It's a real nasty piece of work. Likes to call its buddies over just to devour them. And it's only getting more aggressive over time. Not even the exorcists have been able to keep it under control. If you know what's good for you, you'll all stay away from there too. A demon that devours other demons and gets more brutal. That sounds like venomization. If it's bringing in other demons just to eat them, then yeah. I'd bet it's acting on instinct. Trying to live and be strong, even if that means eating its fellow demons. Why, that's positively alluring. 
And how is that exactly? You know how when it's late at night and you just know you shouldn't have that snack, but there it is and it's so tempting? Hmm. If it's been at this for a while, I bet it'll make for a pretty tough opponent. Yeah. And if Velvet devoured it, she might become a lot stronger. It sounds dangerous to me. Hmm. To feed or not to feed? That is the question. We know how powerful that cannibal demon will become if we leave it to its own devices. It will be safer to eliminate it as soon as we can. This one was actually available earlier, but I missed it. We were hoping to put on a comedy routine. Any way you can fit us in? I can, but folks in Yisult are picky when it comes to comedy. You'd better know what you're doing. I love a good challenge. Wow, Rokuro. You actually feel like helping out? Believe it or not, I've always been interested in theater. I thought it would be good for building courage. I think you have enough courage already, but for now, I think we should set your sights low. I'll do most of the talking, you just respond to me and follow along. Okay, but if you start giving me some jabs, am I permitted to counterattack? As long as it's not with your sword. <laughs> That's not exactly reassuring. Let's get going, Makilu. We've got a show to do. Oh boy, I'm not sure about this one. Hi there! We're Magilu and Rokuro, a wild rough and tumble pair! <laughs> Magic Azam! The weather's so nice and salt, isn't it? Especially the sea breeze. Speaking of which... Sea breezes are bad for swords. If you don't keep them polished, the salt will rust them. Uh, I suppose that's good advice for any sword enthusiasts out there. But anyway... Doesn't the air make you want to eat seafood? Ah, sashimi, fresh boiled fish on the shore, seafood bowls. So many kinds look so delicious, but... And fillets, too. You can't forget those. It takes true mastery to be able to use a blade so finely. Every creature, not just fish, has delicious spots that make for perfect cuts if you know where to find them. Um, that's kind of gross, but okay. Some seafood that tastes good looks downright weird, you know? You've got octopuses, you've got swordfish, you've got... Swordfish! <laughs> now, if there's one fish out there, I'd love to duel at least once. It's that one for sure. Um, you know there's not much I can do with these sudden wild tangents, right? No, 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 you see, I was just making a gag about how I'm a swordsman, so a swordfish would be like my rival, you get it? Oh, just shut up. Oh, oh okay. So you've got octopuses, swordfish, you've got those freaky deep-sea anglerfish, some say the more bizarre looking the fish, the better its taste. Maybe it's true. I love puffer fish and they're really weird, round shaped. Speaking of round animals, I once met this round looking guy named Arma Dillon. I'd never seen anyone so round before or even since. Uh, I can't take it anymore. You're a nightmare to work with. That turned out pretty funny. Yeah, well, I feel like our material could have been better. What's your take on it? I'll just say one thing. If nothing else, your partner was a convincing fool. I don't think he had to act much. You think so? No, you're just a free spirit nobody can hope to control. Your attention, please! I've tabulated the results and I've come to the conclusion that... You're all hopelessly unfunny! I'm sorry. I don't really care how it went. But when you put it that way, I get a little pissed off. Anyway, that's why I'll be teaming up with Bienfu to take on Modulu. Works for me! I'm ready when you are, Miss Modulu! Which bit are you gonna do? Your specialty, Cat Emperor? Or the surefire automaton assault? Neither. We need brute force to win, so I'm going with Elysian Thunder! Which means that when things are at their peak, we're gonna hit the audience with lots of thunder, right? Right! Thunder in the form of relentless ad-libbing, as much as we can possibly handle! Okay! I'll scout out some local material we can use for our opening warm-up, too! Great! You do that! You two are really in sync. Couldn't you two just have teamed up from the start? It's almost like the whole thing was an elaborate joke just so she could have this punchline. Uh... Well, now with that settled, let's make our way to Logras and meet up with Modulu. <laughs> Magilu and Rokuro. That's an act that could go downhill fast. 
Well, well, what do we- what have we here? The rascal who went and proposed to my daughter, eh? Come here and have a drink with me, boy. Yes, sir, anything for my father-in-law to be, sir. There's no sense in kicking the exorcists while they're down. We need to think about how we can help. Absolutely, I don't want to go back to three years ago. Grand Salvation, Grand Salvation. Anominot, Aminok, or whoever else you've got. There has to be a true Imperian out there that'll save us. I saw Malik take off its mask and start talking, and the next thing I knew, it vanished, just like that. And perhaps Malachim were servants of the Imperian all along. Does that mean humanity has been forsaken? I hope not. Haria Village, getting wiped out by demon blight. Really makes you think, doesn't it? Like, if they had abandoned their faith in Nominoch and moved to Assault, they might have been saved. I'm glad they didn't come here. They deserved it. It's their punishment for heresy. How could you? No one deserves that fate. But didn't that priestess and her daughter turn first? That's what caused it to spread. But look at us here in Isolt. Not a single case of demon blight. That's the only possible explanation. They were crazy to resist the Abbey. Shame on you. Don't speak ill of the dead. No one wants to become a demon. I had a friend in Haria. She was a good person. Whether she believed in Aminoch or Inominat, she was a person just like us. Our islands were her home. Perhaps I have no right to say anything here, but please, don't ever lose that kind heart of yours. That's the best way you can honor the memory of Haria's people. I won't. I'll go there soon with an offering of flowers. There's no protecting yourself from demon blight. Tomorrow it could be me. I just hope I never forget my sympathy for others. When Aminok didn't offer us any blessings we could actually see, and Nominok gave us Malachim and Exorcist. I think the choice between the two Imperians is very clear. Come, sinner, and repent your wicked deeds. Why are you whispering? Because everyone else in your group has been nothing but trouble. Not a single one of them will truly repent. What kind of place do they think this holy sanctuary is? I don't know what to tell you. You'll have to take it up with them. I can't. You know what they're like, right? If I complain about it to them, they'll just beat the stuffing out of me. I wish I could tell you that deep down they're all good people, but... <sighs> That's why you need to confess something. What? Why me? Please, I just want to hear a legitimate confession for once. If you don't hurry up, I'll put a curse on you. <sighs> oh, all right. I'm so sorry for all the trouble that my companions have caused you, Father. Forgive me. No, that's not going to work. I guess I'm not quite in the mood to forgive that yet. <laughs> well, maybe you should repent for being such a petty, mean old priest. What do you expect me to do? Pe priests are people too, you know. If we uh, all just get it over with and uh, catch Demon Blade already, there'd be nothing to be afraid of. Why does this sound so relevant to today? What kind of attitude is that? Not the best fate, granted, but it's better than humanity uh, sputtering and wheezing as it slowly gives up the ghost. That is what. Uh, that is also pretty much what Heldoff was proposing, wasn't he? Go get him, Tiger. Young Thursday night. I hear there's one really passionate Lady Teresa fan in Helavis, but I'm not going to lose to a poser like him. Lady Teresa's true allure isn't in those frozen eyes. You can't say you understand her if that's all you see, but I do. Only I understand her true appeal. Do you want to know what it is? Um, well, I don't think I really care. Do you? Huh? Of course you do. Um, okay, sure. Well, if you insist, I'll tell you. Teresa's true allure is in that tinge of sadness hidden within her lovely face. Even when she's smiling, there's a touch of melancholy that never leaves her. It's like her heart is somewhere else, somewhere distant. So where is it? With her love, her true love, the true love she's yet to meet. How tragic. She suffers, lamenting the love she cannot find, yet doesn't realize that the very man she seeks is so near. 
That's why I watched over her so dearly. And then it happened. It was a day I'll never forget. What happened? She was off duty, frolicking in the waves by Maclear Beach. That alabaster skin, how pure she looked in her swimsuit. This guy is really, really creepy. Yeah, seriously creepy. Hey, what's with that cold look? I feel bad for Teresa. She had to protect creeps like this guy, too. What cold, cold eyes you have. Velvet, Eleanor, quickly, avert your gaze! If you keep looking at him with disgust and disdain, you'll only stimulate this perverted freak! Come on, everyone. Let's go. No, come back! Please! Scorn me! Despise me! I'm begging you, stop me with your frostiest gaze, please! This is one battle the Lord of Calamity will retreat from. I found something weird in my new pack of Exorcist cards. At first it looked like a rank 10 Melchior, but there was a sticker on it. So I peeled it off and... A rank 0 Magellanica? What's that? Is that is this a bootleg or something? We're writing letters to the Shepherd. I wrote, fight hard for a future. Oh, I'm sure that'll make the Shepherd very happy. And then I wrote, please introduce me to any ex hunky Exorcist you know. I'm not sure the Shepherd would be happy with that though. I found the perfect place under the docks. Let's build a new fort down there. You want to become fishermen, eh? Why the sudden interest? Well, of how bleak the world's become, we just want to catch fish and do something nice for our families. You've gone and made me all misty. Well, I do hope to start a fishing company eventually, with me as the president, obviously. This is the end of civilization? The sky's still blue, the sea is still blue, but will there be any people left to see them? I don't know, it depends on where the shepherd can defeat the Lord of Calamity. I've heard a group called Maggie Lou's Menagerie is quietly building popularity among weirdos. Maybe I'll try turning my leftover stock of Aminoke figurines into Mag uh, Maggie Lou figurines. I don't care how bad it gets, I'm going to struggle to the bare end. Old people are scared of dying too, you know. Got a problem with that? Hey, have you heard the rumors? People are saying there's a talking Pengyon around. I didn't know Pengyons could talk. It's true. Three people have already talked with it near the beach at night. You don't say. We should totally try to capture it! It'd be a great addition to Moggy Lou's Menagerie! Well, this is no light matter here in Salt. Local legend has it that when the end times come, a talking Pengyon will declare judgment upon the sinful. Everyone who's encountered this Pengyon has been bedridden from the sheer shock of it! Are you sure it's not just some demon? It doesn't appear to be, though it does seem to be quite aggressive. It goes after people, attacking them as it yells, I'm a medical student from Rize Maxia! Is that supposed to be its judgment or whatever? I have no idea, but whatever you do, you'd better not visit the beach at night. This is some kind of reverse psychology trick, right? There's a talking penguin that shows up, so stay away from the beach at night. Hmm, you want to stay here and see? So I have to talk to the innkeeper in order to actually activate this event. Another day without a wild penguin sighting. How are things looking at the penguin farm? Not good. They're still listless. I tried changing their feed, but they barely touched it. With the weather what it is, the sea temperature has gone down. Maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe so. I've been pulling up different fish around here lately too. And get this. I found a Kraken Queen in my nets the other day. Normally, you only find them in the Northern Oceans. Kraken Queen? If this keeps up, Isolt's fishing industry is in dire peril. We've got to do something about this. Fishermen and penguin farmers. We should all get together and have a meeting to figure out what to do. By the way, you get smacked about by that Kraken Queen? Oh yeah. Those long whip-like tentacles did a number on me. I loved every moment of it. Oh man! Lucky! I should take the boat out tomorrow, see if I can catch one. I still don't get it. But as long as they're having fun. I think I'd feel a real passion for fishing if a Kraken Queen slapped me just once. I just came up with my own proverb that means the same thing as every cloud has a silver lining. Global cooling brings Kraken Queens. If something bad happens, something good will balance it out. That's my philosophy. I'll finish this quickly. Okay, may have been a tad over-leveled for this enemy. It has a lot of weak it's allies, but 
Due to its description, I suspect it was supposed to eat these allies in order to power itself up or heal. I won't- I wouldn't know because I'm pretty sure my allies killed all the mooks way too quickly. Yeah, at this point- uh, I, it turns out I could have fought it earlier, but I missed my opportunity. That sucks. I wonder if it could eat us too. Well, I won't know because I pretty much killed all this combo right here. Yep, forgot to activate my Mystic Art in time. Oh well. Survivor Ventite. Have damage taken when holding only one soul. That might get. That might help me if my uh, char other characters get stun locked too much. Whew. I don't know how, but we managed to beat it. It devoured other demons purely by instinct. Sounds kind of like me, doesn't it? <sighs> so you've eaten a few cows or demons, whatever. When you're hungry, you eat. The only ones who put any moral weight on it are humans. Personally, I wouldn't sweat it too much. What are you trying to say? It's fine. I don't really care if I'm seen as a bad guy. I don't really know how to put it, but... I sensed a kind of strength inside that demon. Like a determination to continue living. It was powerful and frightening, but I don't think it was bad. Figures. Yeah, it's not much because it's such a weak enemy. I think I might actually get more from some random encounters. Hey mister, have you ever been attacked by pirates? Oh, many times. By one of a beer and also one of the meanest gays you've ever seen. You only get a short warning of quit slacking and then boom. And you love to tell a tale, you must be tough. Do you hear? Lots of exorcists have lost their powers because of some demon called the Lord of Calamity. What is Lord Artorius even doing? Did he change after becoming a shepherd? People often get lazy after earning titles. Maybe he can't be barred to work for the sake of commoners like us. Is the world going to be destroyed by the bad guys? By this calamity monster? What'd I tell you about asking weird questions to strangers? Sorry, he's a real handful. I don't mind. My little brother was full of curiosity too. Always asking everyone all sorts of questions. Oh, is this your brother? No, I'm not. So the world's gonna be destroyed? What would you say if I said yes? I don't want to be destroyed! I want to be a pirate and explore the world, and I wouldn't be able to have my sister's meatballs anymore! So, what will you do about it? I'll stop that monster! I'll protect my sister! Then you'll need to get stronger. The Lord of Calamity is really tough. Stronger than a demon or a dragon? You bet. But you'll still fight her? I will! Good answer. As a reward, I'll give you a good tip. If you want to get stronger, you'll need to get your own compass first. A compass? Isn't that for ships? That'll make me stronger? Yes. I know a boy who found a compass. With it, he traveled the world and got really strong. Wow. I'll find the compass and get strong too! Don't worry sis, I'll protect you. The enemy will feel a sting of my compass's weight. You're so brave, I'm a lucky girl. But I'm not sure compasses are made for whacking people around the head with them. Danger creates opportunity, right? Now that mid gans under pressure, its neighbors can stretch out a bit. It's time to restore Talizan to her former glory. I hope to work with folks of a similar mind. That's not a bad plan. If you change your perspective, you might find new paths, eh? Some people think there are, there's no hope for the world, but the windmills are still turning, aren't they? I've got work to do, so I don't have time for despair. Not while gondolas are still moving. Can't take fish from the shop, alright? Here, I'll give you some of my snacks instead. Meow. The minute the band was lifted on keeping cats as pets, the town turned right back to the old Talizan. Now every day is a battle, a battle against those four-footed fish filters. You look back to history, war has claimed a far greater number of lives than demons. And we started those wars ourselves. I'm not sure we should be especially frightened of demons. When I grow up, I want to be a maid. That might be a little tough. Been to a lot of inns, but this place stands out as one of the cleanest and friendliest. Thank you. Words like that make all of our efforts worthwhile. You have to work hard when nobody's watching. Somebody, well, someone will always knows and appreciate what you've done. I'm finally done cleaning up the house. This house has plenty of room. We can add more to our family and still be fine. 
<laughs> but that means I'd have to work that much harder, too. It won't be so bad. As long as we work together as a family, it'll be okay. Yeah, and Zavid will help out, too. Yeah, that's right. We always help each other in times of need, just like the way Zavid does. <laughs> Aren't you the bossy one? But I hear you. We'll do it Zavid's way. Yeah! yeah! Oh, I hope Zavid comes over to play soon. Zavid. We should ask them how they know him. Yes, we should. I'll handle it. I'm Eleanor Hume, an exorcist with the Abbey. I'm terribly sorry to intrude, but I was hoping you would tell me how you all know Zavid. Oh, do you know Zavid too? Yes, we have a history. I was passing by when I just happened to hear his name, and I thought I'd ask. Oh, sure. Well, we feel like we owe him a great deal. I guess it all started when he kidnapped us. K kidnapped you? Let me explain. My wife and I, we were both chefs. And one day, Zavid showed up out of the blue and practically hauled us back to his home. There waiting for us were Theodora and these children. Theodora? Yeah, Theodora. You know, his girlfriend. His girlfriend. These children had lost their parents, and Zavid and Theodora took them in. Then Zavid rushed us back outside. We were so startled by how sudden it all was. We had no idea what he was going to try to make us do. But then he asked us if we could cook the children a meal that humans would find delicious. He said that Malakim enjoy eating the same kind of food as humans do, but they lack the skills or know-how to cook it. At this point, how could we not help? We made them the biggest and best meal we could. It was huge and delicious. The Mabo curry nearly melted my face off. The pasta margarita was the best. Well, I love the peach pie. But yeah, after that, we ended up stopping by the house a lot and started teaching Theodora some recipes. We lost a child to a demon. Ever since, we've forgotten we could ever laugh. But Savid, Theodora, and the children, they gave us a newfound joy in life. From a kidnapper to a savior, then. Exactly. Until they came along, we'd never even realized that Malakim have hearts, just like people do. It's because they do that they fight alongside you exorcists against the demons. I see that now. Right. What was Theodora like? I love her. When I was too scared to sleep, she held my hand and let me sleep in her bed. She reminded me of my mom. But Zavid was always so mean to me. One time, he even hit me upside the head. You two were always roughhousing, being dumb and breaking stuff and getting hurt. Hey, you want to fight? Come on, you two. Calm down. It sounds like these kids were well-loved. Yeah. Ah, but one day, without any warning, Theodora left the house and went missing. And Zavid went off in search for his love, leaving you two to care for the children. He asked us to keep the kids safe until he and Theodora returned home. We just recently moved here, where there's a port, because our old town was too remote. All right, I think I get it now. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Zavid can be a bit rough and tumble, but he's a good man at heart. If he's in trouble, I hope you'll help him out. If not for him, then for the children. All right. We call this place the Spring Breeze House because Theodora was as gentle as a spring breeze. We feed the kids here delicious, nutritious meals every day so they'll grow up to be big and strong. It's what my wife and I want to do, but it's also our way of saying thanks to Zavid and Theodora. Zavid's stories about his travels are the best. I hope I can go with him someday. Theodora loves great uh, Milfeus. One time she ate ten in a row and her whole mouth was purple. We all laughed at that. We all want to wield pendulums like Zavid. He said he'll teach us when we grow up, so we're gonna eat as much as we can until we can get big. Hey, the food here has gotten better lately. Yeah, we hired a new chef. It's nice to have a skilled, friendly employee here. People have been saying that the Lord of Calamity destroyed Mercio, but do you know anything about what happened? Well, Mercio wasn't destroyed. It was more like taken over. All the people were driven out. How are other towns holding up? Well, there are more demons around than before. I'd say people are getting nervous. Is the demon blight 
really spreading? It's the worst it's ever been these past few years. In that case, it's more important than ever that we settle East Gand. East Gand has had the least trouble with the Demon Blight. More importantly, there's room here for so many to settle. So, you want to build a new town? Yeah. I'm thinking of the area around Lake Pernia. It's high up, but it's good land. Ready access to good fresh water is a big plus. The soil is rich there too, so it'd be a good location for a town. All right, now I'm getting excited. Me too. It won't be easy, but in this world, what is? Besides, I want to do my part to help people. Okay, last thing we'll need is ladies. We can't start a town without our better halves. Before we plan our town, we'll need to plan for romance. Don't waste your time. What? No woman will fall for a guy who whines about needing love or romance to make something of himself. If you want proof, look no further than the icy glares these ladies here are giving you. Oh, that scorn. I've never seen anything like it. Still, it'll be lonely there with just a bunch of guys. Speak not of dreams. Become them. I read that in a book once. People are drawn to those with conviction, who work hard to fulfill their dreams. In other words, find passion in something, and someone will take notice of you. A long time ago, I read that the secret to finding love is not to fall for someone, but to make someone fall for you. Okay, let's do it. Let's make our lakeside town a reality. Woohoo! The girls won't be able to keep their hands off us. There's a city at the bottom of Lake Pernia, right? You think we could reuse its foundations? Well, Pernia is a closed lake, meaning water doesn't flow out of it. If we built waterways to drain it, the city would eventually be exposed. So it's possible, I guess. Great, I'll go with the, that plan. Once I succeed, the ladies will love me. Hmm. Lady Lake? Is that what they're making? Theodora. She must be that white-horned dragon, right? She must be. I don't see any other reason for Zavid to risk his life protecting a dragon. To be living with human children who have gone through such trauma, the risk of exposure to malevolence would have been high. And yet she was willing to help them, to take them in. It's no wonder Zavid wants to save her. But there's no way to turn her back into a Moloch, right? That's correct. Which is why you feel you have to kill it. I don't disagree with your conclusion. But... But I think you're going about it the wrong way. How so? No one would stand by and permit his former love to be killed before his very eyes. Even when said love has been irrevocably changed. If you can empathize with him and talk things out, I think you two can come to terms without having to fight. For some things, Eleanor, emotion runs too deep for reason to be heard. If he was so easily swayed that words could convince him, he would already have killed that dragon. But still... I'm not in the mood to argue. Let's just go. If only I could learn how to control those flames. Hmm, that's a simple tune, but catchy. Do you write it yourself? No, it's a festival song from the village of a ball. I learned from a peddler there after we became friends. I know that melody very well. I'm glad someone still remembers it. We want to put together a city why should fight the demons. Let us lend what aid we can. Our defense should be our own responsibility. We might not win, but we'll make them pay for whatever they take. There aren't enough exorcists around, which means we all need all the help we can get. We'd be grateful to have you on our side. There's a legend that says one prince survived the fall of the Holy Kingdom of Highland. It's prophesied that he will wander a land until he finds the Lady of the Lake and rebuild his, his domain. A wandering prince, how romantic. Great Imperial Nominat, please watch over to Lord Shepherd. Please save your humble servants from this world of misery. Listen, I count all the steps in the city. The total number of steps in Tel is... 436. Good work, I'll remember that. But that's only the places I was allowed to go, so it might not be the total total. Even so, I admire your determination. Very well done. My legs are a lot stronger now, too. So your legs will carry you far. Counting steps has turned into a hobby of mine. My next goal is the stairway at the Empyrean throne. That's it, I'm getting out of Tel and I'm going to see the capital in every corner of the world. If I'm going to die, I'll do it on my own terms, while on an adventure. Oh, hello again, Doctor. Good day. May I order a bouquet? I need it this weekend. A bouquet? Is it already that time again? You're heading to a ball again this year? That's right. A ball? 
Mm, same as always. Nico's favorites? No, I'd like to order lilacs this year. Lilacs? I thought I'd tell her the news when I visited this year. So, you finally decided to marry? I have. I could never forget Nico. Not a day goes by where I don't think. If only I'd made up my mind sooner with her, then asked her to move here. She wouldn't have been there on that tragic night. And yet, I have to move on. I think that's the right decision. We can't give up on our lives over those who have left us. We have to live! I'll make the biggest lilac bouquet you've ever seen. I'm sure Nico will be happy for you. And congratulations. Thank you. Why a lilac bouquet? Lilacs have a special meaning. The treasured memory. I see. I hope his message reaches her. Yes, I believe it will. It's important for young people to stay positive during dark times. Do your best for the future's sake. I will, for all the people who won't see it. Kids aren't allowed to climb this ladder because it's dangerous. Do you know what's at the top? It's strange, but I've been thinking a lot about a, a ball lately. The prickle boards their hunters brought in were, were awfully tasty. Yeah, yes, we go camp there when I, when I was young, and sing and dance all night with the villagers. Meow, 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 meow! Your attention, please, for an important announcement. To commemorate all your hard work saving my friends, I'd like to invite you to come to Cat's Corner. Whoa, Cat's Corner! Awesome! But we don't have any business there. Now hold on. Cat's Corner is a sort of phantom place that's never been plotted on any map before. And we'll have the chance to explore it! If it's home to a lot of cats, I kind of want to see it for myself. Denied. It's a waste of our time. Oh, come on, Velvet. Quit being such a killjoy. Cat's Corner is like an exclusive members-only club. Nobody but nobody would turn down an invitation. Exactly. You should be grateful for this opportunity. Just think of it as a new experience. Besides, aren't you even a little bit curious? I can't believe this. You guys are starting to sound more casual than the cats now. Well, if you ever feel like visiting Cat's Corner, just say the word, Mio. You want to visit Cat's Corner, yes. Wow, so this is Cat's Corner. I'd never have guessed a place like this existed. <laughs> what an adorable little hamlet. You can feel your motivation to get stuff done just floating away. And look at all the cats! <laughs> it's so peaceful here. Kinda makes me want to sit down for a big feast. Look, over there. Is that the cat's pajamas? I've heard stories. <laughs> Velvet, don't tell me you're... Are you allergic to cats? That's why I didn't want to come here. Are you gonna be okay, Velvet? Of course, it's not... What? Oh yeah, the legendary high roller Armadillon passed through here recently. I knew he'd be round, but I didn't think he'd be that round. His career, his personality, his family life, they're all round two. No matter no wonder he's so popular. There's a geo board. Adamantine fragment. Cats can have different dialects depending on where they were raised, Meow. I'm from a small hamlet in the Nyagoya area. What's unique about your dialect? <laughs> Sorry, I have no idea what you just said. So how do you say brother in your dialect? Mjör. Sister? Mjör. Mother? Mjör. They all sound the same to me. Can cats where you're from tell the difference? Of course. It's all about the nuance. I think it's a bit too much to wrap my head around. Oh yeah, what about father? Father is father. Huh? That one's normal. Meow insulting! No, that it is fifi, what do you mean, you know? I'm sorry. I forgive you. That's very kind of you. But the proper way to apologize in Nyagoya dialect is... You're all for your forgiveness. 
Sorry for complaining to someone who's kindly gathered so many cat spirits. Have mousy on me. Uh, she sneezed as soon as I clicked the dialogue. Welcome, curl up wherever you like. I'll even sing you a lullaby if you say. Elixir. Thanks for grabbing all those cat spirits. Now we have a fun-filled time to play in. We won't forget what you've done for us. Mouchus gracias. That's how we say thanks around here. There's something about s saying flows like a river that sounds so wise. Can you think of a good example? Hmm, let's see. If people are water and history are to flow, then the world is a river. Does that work? Oh yeah, that's very dignified. Can you use that one? Sure, go ahead. They might have actually said that in the in Zestiria, huh? For dozens of years, I always asked what am I, but something always obscures the answer. Then before I know it, my mind has drifted to what I'll be having for dinner. Alas, it seems like the answer will evade me for quite some time to come. I'm thinking of growing cattails here. I wonder how tall they'll grow. Great, I love tall tails. Sorry, kid. Not the kind of tails you're thinking of. You'll have to look elsewhere for those. Oh, well, I'm sure there's some tails to be found around here somewhere. Yeah, tails of this and that are all over the place. Keep your ears open, you'll find some good ones. Look, an unidentified flying table. I just had to shout it out, you know? Meow. Two more m movies. Past conversations. I'm sure I missed quite a few. Yeah, I missed number 130. Never was a big fan of the skit system. It's a human! Ah, I'm Satsuji, head of the car character card family. So you fasted the rest of my household. This should prove entertaining. Uh, so it took a lot of RNG, but I did it. Alas, I have to admit you have bested me. Such a fine display deserves a reward. This outfit is the mark of a master of the game. Wear it with pride. Boss closed eyes in. That was pretty fun. Come visit me again sometime. Wow, another wild party with my favorite person in the world. There were sparks in the air, and I still feel elect electrified. Oh, I can't get enough. The cat's pajamas is a social club for discerning adults who know the difference between romance and play. That's why you must be at least 2,000 years old to enter. Our apologies. Red Shamal Meal. Rats, you found me. You must be something special you saw through my tail in the sand art. It sounds like a lot of fun. I'd love to try it myself. There's going to be an Anything Goes division in the next Adarte Cup. Any race can participate. Just put on a pair of cat ears and you're in, meow! I'm no undercats. My paws are ready. I'm gonna flip the world of paw pad wrestling onto its back. And then I'm gonna rub its tummy. Meow, I'm on fire. The Adarte Club will be held in uh, 22 years. That's kind of long for humans, isn't it? But not too long for a Malik. I hope you're ready. Visitors to this place always end up humming to themselves. Meow, 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 meow. But if that happens to you, you know you've got real cat spirit. Welcome, feel free to look around, but if you're just window shopping, I might throw a hissy fit. Adamantine tear, finally. Might take a few visits, though. Sliding puzzles? Oh no, it's one of these. Run. Six, uh, 765 gold. Emetine fragment again. Gonna need way more of these. I've got fervor for adventure. I travel the world to reclaim hidden treasures, meow. Doesn't that just make you a cat burglar? 
big words coming from a pirate, meow. You guys pilfer and pillage anything you can get your paws on. You prattle on about how romantic your life on the sea is, but you're just a bunch of ruffians. I... I'm sorry. Good. As long as you know where we stand, meow. I've got my own ship, and wait till you hear what I named it. It'll make your whiskers spin. I call her Von Miotia of my youth. Warp the cat's expedition. Oh, but first we need to eat some snacks. Oh, don't tell me I have the hiccups now. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to this Let's Play of Tales of Bersuria. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, and or hit the bell icon.